Stephen, you've just released the revised edition of your book from about five years ago, Black Poppies. Can you tell us why it's been revised and re-released? The first edition of Black Poppies uh, came out in 2014 for the centenary of World War I. Uh, has done very well. It's been a hard slog getting the word out on the streets that the book exists during that World War I centenary period. But word of mouth and a lot of support from a lot of people has meant that the book has had to be reprinted over and over again. And so the History Press, who published it, came to me in, and said, do you have any more information about black servicemen in the First World War, the black community in Britain in the First World War period? And I said, I've got lots more information because over that five year period, I collected more information, more life stories, more photographs. Um, and so they asked me if I would consider doing a revised edition, a new edition, with a, they've done a brand new cover, a beautiful cover. Um, but it's essentially the same book. I just took out about a third of the book and put a third new material in. But some of that material is very important. They include the life stories of soldiers like George Arthur Roberts and Trinidad who joined the Middlesex Regiment and was a pioneer um, with the British Legion just after the First World War. He was a campaigner for ex-servicemen, better treatment of ex-servicemen. So George Arthur Roberts is, is a very important new figure in the book. David Clementson, who was from a well-to-do Jamaican family, who was a young lad studying at college in Bristol, in England when the war broke out he joined up and rose through the ranks but what was interesting about David was he could have passed for white but refused but it didn't hinder his promotion prospects mm. could have done uh, there's also the World War One correspondence of the Jamaican siblings Norman Roy and Vera Manley and those two brothers and their sister were all in England when the war broke out in 1914. Vera was a music teacher. Norman and Roy were studying at university, two different universities. And they immediately joined up and fought all through the war. Sadly, Roy was killed in action in 1917. And these letters have not ever been published, as far as I'm aware. What happened was the first edition of Black Poppies was read by a great nephew of the three siblings. He contacted me to say how much he'd enjoyed the book and we met up because there was a chapter about Norman Manley in the first edition, but not the other two. And he showed me these letters. So when the opportunity came to do the new version, I asked his permission and his family's permission to put them into mm. the new version and he said yes. And of course Norman Manley went on to become a very pivotal figure in Jamaican politics and became the first Prime Minister of independent Jamaica when Jamaica was given its independence. So you've added new details, new characters and new stories. How do you decide what to take out of it? The revised edition. You just have to sit down and what I did was was read the book again with a red pen. Mm. It's not just taking out chapters, it's taking out passages or mm. taking out chunks of chapters and editing them in such a way that it, it, it's an editing process. Mm. And it is a skill that I've learned over many, many years of writing books. But I knew almost instinctively what had mm. to go and what had to remain. So the, the, the section, the whole section of the book on the 1919 race riots, when the black community in Britain were attacked by white ex-servicemen up and down the country, that pretty much remains intact. 
but some of the earlier chapters like All the King's Men, which is about black soldiers in the British Army in World War I, that I completely overhauled and mm. cut bits out and put new stories in. But it's just a revised version of that chapter. And things have moved on. So in the Walter Toll chapter, the Walter Toll chapter stays the same. Mm. But I've added some of the more recent things that have happened, like him um, getting uh, memorials up and down the country and, and, and things like that. And there was enough material to put in, but it wasn't that difficult to cut stuff out. You, you just go through it with a red pen and just... Essentially, what is Black Poppies about? Black Poppies, when it was when I first discussed it with the History Press all those years ago, because of the World War One centenary, it was going to be about the black servicemen, soldiers and sailors in the First World War, and at least one Air Force gentleman, William Robinson Clark. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do a book that was just, I'm not a military mm. historian. I wanted to include the wider black community in Britain. And so I said to the History Press, can I include the wider community, Put them, give them a context? And that way I can also include women. So there are a lot of black women in the book both the first edition and the new edition, uh, which I'm pleased about because it acknowledges a history that's never been really highlighted at all, which is black women in Britain in the First World War. And I must tell you a very quick story. I've searched and searched and searched for evidence of a black nurse in Britain in the First World War, could never find evidence. I was, I'm pretty positive that would have been black nurses, but there's nothing that proved it. Two weeks after finishing the book and sending it to the publisher, someone sent me a photograph of a black nurse in a soldier's convalescent home in England in 1915. And I got permission to use the photograph in the book, but I had to contact the publisher and say, hold it, don't print it yet. <laughs> I found a picture of a black nurse and I'm so proud of that. I mean, I didn't find it, somebody else found it, but they brought it to my attention. Uh, which was brilliant, but it was after the book had been finished. So we had to take one of the photos out and put her in because oh. it's new. And also through through someone that I met at the Metropolitan Police Heritage Society, mm. um, drew my attention to a photograph of a black police officer in London in 1920. So it kind of is in that period. Mm. So he's gone in the book as well. But sadly, we don't know the identity of the nurse or the policeman. It's been five years since the first edition was released. What's been the reaction? To the new edition? No, to the first edition. Oh, the in first the five edition. years. Well, first of all, I've always been of the opinion that black people in Britain knew they had a history, knew they had a connection to the First World War. They just didn't know the detail. So the book took off because it filled in that gap in their knowledge. It gave them some of the detail. It's by no means the definitive book on the mm. subject or the most exhaustive book that's ever going to be written. But in a British context, it does give them some of those stories, some of that evidence mm. that they can say, well, we were here during the First World War. We did take part in the First World War, whether we be a soldier or a mm. nurse or a munitions factory worker or a police officer. We were part of this, the fabric of this country. And so that the reaction from the black community particularly has been really positive, mm. overwhelmingly so. Sometimes I've been moved to tears by the positive comments people make. And also the wider community, the, you know, not just black people, but, but people just interested in the First World War um, have found the book really mm. informative and engaging as well filling in a gap in their knowledge. They didn't even consider black soldiers and sailors in the First World War during that centenary mm. period. And I come along with this book and it really helped. The revised edition, have there been any reactions yet? Yes, it's been incredible. I mean, I, I only mentioned the book in passing on Twitter a couple of days ago and over a hundred 
Is it likes on Twitter? Yeah, likes. Yeah, yeah, likes. I get mixed up with Twitter and <laughs> Facebook. I'm not very good at social media. But yeah, and about 48 at the last count retweets. Amazing. It, it, absolutely. It, and one young black woman that I met at a talk I gave last year for Black History Month at the MOD, the Ministry of Defence, and she's in the Navy, and she's just so fired up over this book. Mm -hmm. And she actually sent me a tweet where she'd photographed the book on Amazon and confirming her order. Wow. <laughs> she was that excited. She absolutely loved it. Absolutely. So with the book, a couple more questions. What did you enjoy most about the new edition writing it? Really, in truth, I mean, not many historians or any writer gets a second chance. It's very rare. And the history press came to me. I didn't go to them. So that came out of the blue. So that was a joy that they thought so highly of the book and its success that they wanted a second edition, a revised edition. Um, but to revisit a book that you've already written and revise it is a wonderful experience. It's easier than the first one. The first one was quite challenged because of the conflicting information and the dearth of information, the lack of evidence that you had to kind of dig out. Mm. With the second edition, I had more than enough material for a second edition. Any challenges? Making it all work, and it with the second edition, again, it was easier to make it hang together. I don't think it quite hung together the first time, but people didn't seem bothered. They were just mm. thankful there was a book on the subject. With the second edition, I hope I refined it mm. in such a way that it, it reads better and is more even more accessible and informative than the first one. Now, I can't let you go without asking you, how did you develop such an interest in black British history? It's too long an answer. That's a, that's a whole book in itself. But it really is what I say to people is not all white people come from all white families. And I, I'm white, but I don't come from an all white family. I had an aunt who is in the book, actually, her childhood memories of the First World War are in the book and adopted aunt Esther, who was from London, born in London in 1912. And she was a great influence on my outlook on life and my interpretation of British history when I was growing up. Uh, it informed me greatly. It wasn't deliberate on her part. It was just the way things evolved. And so in a new chapter that I have in the book on children, black children in the First World War, she figures in, in that chapter, uh, as do many other children that I didn't write about in the first edition. What do you hope that readers will get out of the revised edition of Black Poppies? More information, really. More information about the subject and more of an identity. Because one of the things about the first edition is that it did give a lot of young black people, and older black people for that matter, a sense of identity, a sense of black British identity, that they don't have to keep looking to America for their identity. African Americans, to be specific. They, th there is a story here to be told. Um, and that's very important to me, and I, I hope the second edition will do that as well. Stephen Bourne, author of the second edition, and of course the first edition of Black Poppies, best of luck and thank you. Thank you.